happens when those mental processes go awry, when damage to the brain interferes with the normal structure of human thought. In 1983, Bill Mazal graduated in the top 10% of his law school class and passed the bar exam on the first try. At this time, I want you to start with the number 101 and count back by sevens. Today, he seems normal, okay. but in 1984, a stroke changed yeah. his life. 101, 94, 87, 80, 73, 66, 59, 52, 45... 38, 31, One 34. afternoon in January, I got a phone call from Bill to say something was really wrong. It was an emergency. I needed to come home right away. So I went racing home, and uh, I asked him what had happened, and he told me that he had just been sitting on the couch watching TV when he got this blinding pain in his head and uh, felt very sick and could barely make it to the bedroom to collapse. Turned out to be very bad. Turned out to be an aneurysm. And the aneurysm, as I found out, is a blood vessel that balloons out and starts to bleed, which it did in, in Bill's head. And it was right in about the, the frontal lobe area. That's where the bleeding occurred, is in, is in the frontal lobe area. Right. It was very sudden. It was very scary. And neither of us had any idea what was happening to us, what was happening to our lives, right. what was happening to our future. It may be very hard to appreciate exactly what is wrong with somebody uh, with frontal lobe injury. Wrong. There have been many studies to try and pinpoint a particular function. Yeah. And in some ways, it's almost easier to characterize frontal lobe function by saying what it doesn't do. Wrong. It's not the part of the brain that makes us speak. It's not the part of the brain that allows us to see. It's not the part of the brain that allows us to hear. It's not the part of the brain that allows us to touch something and recognize what that is that we just touched. Uh, it's not really by itself the part of the brain that remembers. Uh, it doesn't seem to be involved in any particularly discrete perceptual, sensory, or so-called motor function. But in spite of that, it seems to have a very critical role in how we use the kind of information that other parts of our brain are dedicated to determining. Before the aneurysm, Bill was very organized, he could plan things sort of automatically. He was very much a planner. He could uh, keep a million details in his head. He had an extremely good memory. He was very outgoing, very self-confident, very take charge kind of a person. Following the aneurysm, like now, Bill is, ex is still very intelligent, but he doesn't have the capacity anymore to apply that. Bill retained after his stroke all of the knowledge that he had previously but he lost his ability to problem solve and in losing his ability to problem solve which is what lawyering is really all about um, he lost his ability to be a functioning lawyer uh, and you know there's nothing more disappointing than finding somebody as bright as he is working with him for a couple of years and then you know seeing overnight those skills just gone. Uh, you know, it, I mean, it, it really cuts deep when you see that. Recognize these tinker toys. Tinker toys. Your job is to make whatever you want with them. Okay, just get started anytime you want. Okay. Because frontal lobe injury causes such subtle problems, psychologists like Muriel Lezak have devised clever ways of evaluating the damage. In making a construction with Tinker Toys, Bill simply jumped into the task with no plan, no forethought. It had not even occurred to him to have had a goal. Overall, we're talking about the frontal lobe as an executive brain area that is responsible for integrating uh, information that comes from many different brain systems into a purposeful plan of behavior anticipating the future, making critical judgments, being able to survey a situation, to juggle ideas, and to choose which idea is most likely to have implications for the future. Did you have any ideas in your head when you started doing it? Not really. I thought, well, no. I was going to make two separate things and sort of join them together, but 
just any two of these together aren't real sturdy, and so I thought I'd get them together earlier. Mm -hmm. If thinking is the process of using information to make decisions, then the frontal lobe is crucial for thinking. Without that, without the frontal lobes, we are at the mercy of our environment. We respond to events without reflection. We are unable to plan for our futures. It is this capacity, the ability to plan for the future, that distinguishes us from all other species. This rhesus monkey has a relatively well-developed frontal lobe. The idea is to see whether he can remember where the food is after his vision is blocked by the screen, whether for him, out of sight means out of mind. If we did not have the ability to keep information in mind when it is no longer in view, we would be responding on the basis of whatever stimulus attracted our attention. The ability to regulate our behavior by internalized knowledge or internalized memories, that is uh, everything that we can uh, keep in mind, allows us to uh, modulate our behavior and to control the outside environment. The Galago monkey is far more primitive than the rhesus. He finds the food in the left food well the first time it's offered. But without much in the way of a frontal lobe, will he have the capacity to keep the food's location in mind when it's now placed in the right-hand well? The frontal lobe may be the most highly evolved area of the brain, and it seems to be the last area to develop in children. At seven months old, Caitlin's brain is still undergoing profound change. Like all children her age, her frontal lobes function more like those of a Galago than a rhesus. Even the slightest distraction causes her to lose track of the food. It will be years before her frontal lobes are functioning at an adult level. Of course, when we say that the frontal lobe is crucial for thinking, we do not mean that the frontal lobe carries out this process independently of other structures in the brain. It carries out these processes through its connections with other centers, through its connections with the sensory centers where information from the outside world is formed, and with the memory centers where information is stored, and with the motor centers where the final decision to act is taken. To think, then, is to activate an entire network of nerve cells that link areas throughout the brain. 